For the first time in nearly half a century, NASA has built a rocket that can send astronauts back to the moon. The space launch system Artemis, the rocket is longer than a football field, more powerful than the famous Saturn V from the Apollo program, which last flew in 1973. NASA is preparing its first new moon rocket for a first test launch in the coming months. Mark Strassman got an up-close look and shows us NASA's plan for a timeline on a lunar landing. Both iconic and daunting, NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building is one of the largest in the world. But obviously you need something this big for, for a vehicle this big. Towering inside, a new rocket that makes you feel just as puny. It's called the Space Launch System, or SLS. This thing is massive. It's about 322 feet tall, so that's taller than the Statue of Liberty. We had to step way back with NASA test director Dan Flores to get a good look at the most powerful rocket ever built. If you look past the scaffolding, you can see the nose of the two boosters. Yep. How powerful? So the boosters provide about 7 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. That's a lot of power. It's a lot of power. NASA spent 11 months stacking this mega rocket piece by piece. The core stage, 212 feet long, arrived by barge. Its four engines will produce another 2 million pounds of thrust. You got a rope up in there? Cranes gingerly lifted and lowered billions of dollars of space hardware into place. And then at the very top? The very top, you have Orion. Orion is the crew capsule. Flores took us up 311 feet for a closer look. When you're looking at this close, you look at all the hundreds of thousands of nuts and bolts that have to be torqued, the hours spent by our technicians getting this work done to get us to this major milestone. And every one of those bolts better be perfect. They, they better be, right? That's because early next year, this rocket and capsule will roll to the launch pad for a critical test flight, Artemis 1. SLS will launch Orion on a course 40,000 miles beyond the moon and back. No astronauts will be on board this flight, but it's the first in a series of increasingly complex lunar missions. We've got a moon-bound rocket stacked with a crew capsule for the first time since Apollo 17 in 1972. Oh, this is a big deal, and it is beautiful, and it is a monster. After more than $30 billion in development costs, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson knows the pressure is on for that test flight to go well. I am an optimist by nature. True, space flight is risky, uh, and there are penalties that you pay because Mistakes are made uh, by human beings. The next mission, Artemis II, will have a crew. It's due to fly around the moon by May 2024. NASA is now hoping Artemis III, a moon landing using SpaceX's Starship, happens sometime in 2025. That crew will include the first female moonwalker and astronaut Kayla Behrens, one of the candidates. If they ask who wants to go to the moon first, you're raising your hand? Oh yeah, I think we all raise our hands. Like who would not want to go to the moon? Whatever the crew ends up being, we're gonna be pumped for each other. But first, the most complex rocket in history has to work. America's lunar future depends on it. For CBS Mornings, Mark Strassman at the Kennedy Space Center. I am so genuinely excited for this era of space exploration that we are in. When I was a kid, we had po a lot of kids um, that I knew had posters of Buzz Aldrin, of Neil course, Armstrong, of course, Michael yeah. Collins on their wall. We knew all the astronauts. We knew all the different Apollo missions. We followed them. Um, this is really cool. And because of the advancements in technology, it just seems like we have so much at the palm of our hands. Yes. Don't you yes. just love science? 2025, oh, Jamie. Three of us. <laughs> let's let's volunteer. Let's I'm do okay. it. <laughs> I'm good. Really? Jamie. Ah. Jamie. Ah. You're coming. Okay. We're just going to take you along with us. Okay. <laughs>